Hello everyone and uh, let us continue with the next lecture on the Laplace transformation uh, and this happens to be the fifth lecture on that and essentially we are going to see uh, that many of the formulas that we have derived namely these uh, expressions are due to a single formula that means if you have the Laplace transform for a particular uh, function then these things can be easily obtained so without remembering them separately so that for the Laplace transform of a particular function, namely the power function, together with the shifting theorem is going to be very useful to obtain the Laplace transform of several functions at once. So everything will come in a single uh, step once you know that. So that is that is what I would like to tell. And we have already got the Laplace transform of uh, these functions in the last class. And now the question is that, uh, what is that uh, power function? from which we are going to get the answers to this. The answer is that exactly we have seen this expression in the last uh, class, namely the Laplace transform of t to the power alpha. This is what I am calling by the name power law function or power function, where alpha is going to be a function of complex variable or it could be any constant in the complex plane. Constant in the complex plane is, it is looking like something like a plus ib. So maybe that I can write down here that alpha is going to belong, okay, alpha is belonging to the set of all complex numbers like that. This C should be nice, otherwise it doesn't look very good. So I'll write like that. So this is belonging to, okay. So C is an element of uh, set of all complex numbers. So that point has to be emphasized, otherwise we sl slowly forget and then we always think that it is a real constant. So for that reason it's required and this expression exactly we have derived it in the last class and we are going to see that together with this you have to apply the shifting theorem then if you combine that means together means you're going to combine the power law and the shifting theorem then we are going to get a very useful result and once you have that all these things can be obtained by appropriate substitution so that's what we have here this equation represents the laplace transformation of the t to the power alpha where you have that is equal to the gamma function of alpha plus 1 divided by s raised to alpha plus 1. These conditions you know why it is coming this is a region of convergence and alpha greater than minus 1 is a direct consequence of the definition of the gamma function. So this is the region of convergence that is due to the uh, definition of the gamma function itself and where uh, the alpha itself is going to be in the complex numbers. Now the second equation that I have written here, this one is the shifting theorem or we say that this is the S yes shifting property. We are interested to apply or we are interested to merge these, these two results. So how do you merge these two results is that there is an f of t here. So, there, so this f of t, you consider that the function f of t could be t to the power of alpha because t to the power alpha result you have it here so we can therefore combine so if you combine we can get the answer in one line so we have e to the power of a t multiplied by t to the power of alpha right so that is equal to now you have to understand what do you mean by f of s minus a so for clarity i will write down here f of s minus a is nothing but it is f of s in which s has to be replaced by s minus a. So if you understand this one f of s in which s has to be replaced by s minus a, now you ask the question what is f of s? What is f of s means it is the Laplace transform of f of t and what is f of t is t to the power of alpha. That means Laplace transform of t to the power alpha is here so you have to copy this one here. So let us therefore write down like that. This is the gamma of alpha plus 1 divided by s to the alpha plus 1. So that is the expression in which in which you have to apply the shifting. Every s has to be replaced by s minus a. Uh, but here what is a? Here a is of course um, this is a itself. So it is the a itself. So let us have the a like that. S minus a. So just to, we have to replace, there is only one place where S has to be replaced, therefore the expression is uh, gamma of alpha plus 1 divided by, this is actually you will get, uh, here you have to be careful, uh, 
the the instance has to be replaced by s minus a provided there is a plus here so i think we have uh, in the last class we have done the calculation with e to the power of plus a then only we get a minus a here okay but now we are going to put a minus here this is the product means we have to replace by plus a so that we have explained in the last class that depending upon um, you know shifting to the right side of, or the left side that depends on whether it is plus a or minus a okay if e to the power at is there then you have to put minus a if minus a is there here then plus a has to be there so if that is the situation we have like that to the power of alpha plus 1 so this is the important result which i have been talking about so this will be equal to the plus transform of e to the power of minus a t and then you have t to the power of alpha the remaining conditions are going to follow from here of course all the conditions this 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 have to be copied and we have to keep it here but there is a only one important point we are putting zero here but here this is s plus a this was only s so therefore only one condition have to be modified only for this you have to say that the condition is real part of s must be greater than we say that this is real part of a okay so because zero this is actually s plus zero okay so therefore this is s plus a so that has to be greater than that i am always uh, making this plus minus mistake so let me therefore write down real part of minus a okay so so once that is clear the region of convergence can be we can draw like that so if you want to draw the diagram like that so you have a zero so that is your minus a so i am talking about minus a here so minus a real part is this imaginary part can be from any side like that which means what i am trying to say is a will be like something like alpha plus i beta then minus a is nothing but this minus alpha that is this point and this beta will be anywhere on the this y direction so that is the meaning of this uh, expression that you have and uh, this will be the real part of yes the imaginary part of yes here sorry yes here and then you can therefore uh, show the convergence region like this So you, you can now understand what is that minus a doing here and then there is a zero here. So there you have to be careful that is the only place where you will be modifying. The rest of the thing like alpha greater than minus one and alpha is an element of complex number that will be the same. So therefore we can write down alpha is greater than minus one. So this is the uh, main result and we can say that this is an important result. Only from this result directly we can obtain all these formulas because these four expressions are because of the exponential e to the power of this and you can get the laplace transform of these two exponentials from here by substituting alpha equal to zero so what is the relation between this expression and this expression is that if you are going to substitute alpha equal to zero this function becomes one so i get only exponential so the only exponential is here and then you consider that a is nothing but i times omega okay so a, a equal to i times omega means alpha equal to zero so it, it follows like that okay so therefore what happens is you can easily obtain these two quantities from here and once you get these two these two things these are nothing but plus minus of this linear combination of these two will be these two functions and if you remove the i there you get the hyperbolic functions so ultimately what i am trying to say is that you can get all the laplace transform of this from this single formula okay so i will just write down that there is a some number for this equation so there is a condition here so this is the formula this is a condition let me give some number like that one and then what i am trying to say is that laplace on sum of all these are from one so everything comes from equation one not only that you can also get additional information here i have written laplace on sum of t to the power of an integer so integer i have written explicitly n belongs to integer okay this uh, double stroke letter you no know, capital z 
uh, that represent the set of all integers uh, in general it is 0 plus 1 minus 1 plus 2 minus 2 everything is integer but then uh, because the factorial comes into picture uh, we demand that 0 factorial onwards it's meaningful 0 factorial then 1 factorial etc minus 1 factorial we don't have the meaning or it doesn't converge so for that reason because of the factorial definition this greater than or equal to 0 comes and then we have made this special situation of alpha being uh, an integer so that's what we have written here so essentially what happened is that the gamma function has been rewritten in terms of factorial function the remaining thing is identically same so that means these formulas together with Laplace on sum of t to the power of integer all of them all of them can be obtained from a single equation and that single equation is this so therefore this equation is very uh, very important one in the sense that you can get multiple expressions as and when you need like you don't have to remember everything you may have to uh, you just work out uh, uh, two three lines to get all the answers uh, uh, together so therefore this is the uh, one of the most powerful equations that we have so uh, we have seen the air shifting essentially it's a continuation of the last class that uh, uh, we, we have the shifting in the uh, yes parameter so at that time i told that t shifting is also there but not in this property we have to separately work out so the question is the natural question is that instead of t uh, s shifting suppose we have the uh, shifting in the original function itself then how do we handle so this is the part two second part so this is one main result so this is very important keep this uh, result uh, so we will be using this frequently depending upon uh, any problem that you are going to get so for that we will keep and we will move on to the second pro important next property namely the t shifting property the question is that how are you going to take the Laplace transform of this shifted signal? Laplace transform of this shifted signal is how much? So Laplace transform of, so that's all about it. So this is how much? Okay, so the idea is clear. We will do this, this calculation is very easy. Uh, we will do how to proceed with this integration. We have to perform an integration based on the definition of the uh, Laplace transformation that we will do in the next class.